am so happy to be talking to this man <laughs> resplendent in green in front of me at the top of the tower live in the studio today. He is a singer I've watched as a kid. He's a man who I happened to bump into by accident on St. Patrick's Day of all times. And I'm glad to say he's here today because he's now, he's an activist, I think, in many ways you could say too. You'll know him for, from uh, whether it's the underto- undertones or whether it's the singer of a good heart or you're li- You Little Thief uh, and many other things besides. Fergal Sharkey, welcome to the top of the tower. Thank you very much. How Thank you, you for the invitation. How are you today? Uh, I'm absolutely glorious. Yeah, you seem it. It's my, that, as I take, occasionally explain to people since I've been 20 years old, yeah. I've led this brilliant, brilliant, extraordinary life. Random people walk up to him in the street, want to say hello, want to talk about music, want to talk about gigs. How brilliant is that? What do they want? Is there a common thread in commentary? That um, people... it, it varies across the thing, clearly from the number of people going, Teenage Kicks changed my life. Yeah. Um, I normally play a little bit of one-upmanship in that, well, you only think it changed your life. It really did change my yeah. life. Yeah. Uh, clearly some want to talk about uh, a good heart. Yeah. The number of times I've heard... Uh, I normally put it being approached by young young people, and by that I mean anybody under the age of fifty, <laughs> uh, going, "Oh, could I have your autograph, please?" And I'm, of course, my ego kicks in, and you yeah. think, "Oh, I'm still relevant to some twenty-five-year-old." And invariably, it's accompanied with the words, "It's for my mum." Yeah, it's for my mum. Get, yeah. get away from me! Get away! You've affected my nasty home. young person. Get away! <laughs> yep. Uh, how old were you when when uh, Teenage Kicks was no, twenty? Were, you were only twenty years old. Yeah, and you said that changed your life. What, oh, what, what, was it was it was it quick? Uh, totally, utterly. It is the power of radio, and it's radio and music is clearly something just infiltrates all of our lives yeah. daily. Yeah. Um, we made a little independent record on a little independent. Uh, record label in Belfast mm. there were but 2,000 copies in existence wow. the drummer of the undertones came up with this great idea he sent a copy to a man called John Peel and our world changed yeah. literally within 24 extraordinarily hours extraordinarily famous DJ in his, in his day for those yep. who are maybe a little too young and it was it was played at his funeral I think yeah, I mean, this is... Um, it is actually inscribed now John used to tell me this and I would never believe him as it invariably involved maybe one or two glasses of sherry too many I in understand. a pub somewhere. I understand. Um, it is actually inscribed on John's tombstone. Right, okay. The immortal words, a teenage dream so hard to beat. So there you are. I mean, it, that's the impact. Uh, that is just an extraordinary, extraordinary journey to be on. You were 20 years old. You were in Belfast. Um, what year it was was that happening? Uh, that was 1978. Yeah, d- difficult time in that um, part of the world in some ways. For well, s- shall we just say that... Um, the, the way I sometimes describe it, yes, it was a difficult time growing up. It was a difficult time if you were a parent. Yeah. Uh, my parents would fret about it, but I think they fretted more when I told them that I was uh, abandoning <laughs> my very successful career delivering televisions yes. for radio rentals for the opportunity to p- appear on the top of the pops. Yeah. Uh, where I think my dad, being an avid reader of Sunday tabloids, Instantly thought Fergal was going to spend the rest of eternity driving expensive sports cars into swimming pools <laughs> in the middle of some night of drug crazed debauchery. Well, you I have wish. to tell you, that's been 45 years ago. I've been looking for that party ever since, <laughs> and I've still never managed to find it. So, anybody out there who has any clues, I'm still open for advice. Okay, all you need is a big car and a swimming pool. Yeah, so there that, you go. Yeah, okay, I've got you. And I'll be there. Do you remember your first appearance on Top of the Pops? Uh, vividly. And is it is it was is it etched in your mind? Oh, totally. I, I, I was actually doing okay up until about three, four o'clock in the afternoon. Mm. And then we went by the uh, Warner Brothers, where the label handling everything here in the UK. Mm. Uh, met the chairman of Warner Brothers, as you do. So I'm terrified of the whole thing anyway. And he goes, there's nothing to worry about. Just stare down the camera. And there's only 16 million people watching in their living rooms. And that was it. I fell apart in a heartbeat right there. <laughs> Yeah, the biggest audience I'd played to before that was about six people wow. in a local bar in Derry. Yeah. And I was doing fine until he went, oh, there's millions of people out there going to be watching you. But oh you, my you God. did it. You did it. You got there. Oh, we got there. And and suddenly you're now a, a, a pop star, superstar, rock star, whatever you want to call it. Uh, well, the, the truth is, uh, Ryan, the very next day I was back in Derry delivering tellies Were in my you? little van. Yeah. Were you? Yeah. So how did you get from, so you went from, but how did you get out of the TV sales and then into? Um, part of it was then being inundated and it genuinely was being inundated by every record company on the planet. Wow. Uh, trying to sign the undertones really? simply off the back of Teenage Kicks. 
Um, I say this, I've even had someone from your namesake record company, Virgin Records, back in the late 1970s. I later in life told the story to Richard Branson, the founder and owner. Uh, I even had someone from Virgin Records phone me up and in a very bad form of phonetic Irish, try and engage with me. Wow. Oh, that's... Uh, that's... <laughs> and as you can probably tell, there's no bigger insult <laughs> <laughs> Really, don't go there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Especially for English-speaking people, don't go there. That, it, that... You'll be exposed in a heartbeat. So Virgin Records did not get that deal for that reason. Yeah. Uh, instead, a man phoned us up going, I represent Sire Records. Uh, and instantly we went, sorry, Sire Records, you put out the Ramones' first album, wow. Talking Heads' first yeah, album, now you're talking. The Pretenders' first album, and just on and on and on. And yeah. these great, fabulous records that changed lives and changed music in the 1970s. Mm. And we signed to Sire Records in a heartbeat. Oh, wow. And, and and did you have the rock and roll lifestyle as, as dreamed or feared by your father? Or did you, because you're so together and you look so well. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm not seeing rock and roll etched on your face the way I uh, might see not, you. Not not particularly. I was just too busy trying to do a really good job. Yeah. Okay. So you were you were very attentive to the job oh, at that, hand. That, absolutely. Yeah. And it's that you will know this. And anybody's any been anywhere near performing in public. Mm. My brain was constantly. We have to go out there and do the best we possibly possibly can. Yeah. So did I go on stage once with maybe one sherry too many? Yeah. Yes, I did. Okay. Did I walk straight off the front of the stage into the orchestra pit? <laughs> yes, I did. Did I ever repeat that experience? No, no I did not. Lesson learned. Le- we've got, I've got loads of places I want to go. Can you stick around for a few Absolutely. minutes? Absolutely. Okay, Happy Fergal to. Sharkey, your guest this morning. I want to talk about fresh water. I want to talk about a good heart. I want to talk about so many other things. Stay with us. A joy to be listening to that song in front of the man who sang it, Fergal Sharkey, our My guest. apologies. No, no, I'm just saying to you, I said this song is, is played here on a loop. And for good reason, because it's just a cracking song. I mean, how, what's it like for you? I mean, we were, were chatting away, but I was, I was conscious that this is you singing. Um, it's such a great tune. It, it, it is, again, like Teenage Kicks. It's one of those moments. Um, now, Teenage Kicks, did we know what we were doing? No, we didn't. Yeah. By the time I get round to doing this, mm. you know when you're doing a good job. You yeah. know when yeah, things yeah. are working. Yeah. You don't need it to explain to you. And I remember sitting listening back to even rough mixes of this yeah. when it was all coming together. And just going, oh my lord, Sharky. You knew. This is probably going to be much bigger than you, my friend. Really? And simply because the modern world we live in, the statements and royalty checks I get these days, I can see exactly who played what, where, when and how. And you're going, good lord, they're still playing that 20 times a week in Cape Town in South Africa. Is it all over the world? Oh, just all over the world. Isn't that amazing? No wonder you're wearing such a snazzy suit, (laughs) Bernard. That explains a good suit. Uh, 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 Now, here's the thing. You see, I normally find people for doing this kind of thing. And I am going to find you 20 quid. Puns are acceptable. Yeah. But you will now donate 20 quid. I am vice president of a river charity called Wild Fish. Wild Fish. I will send you the link. Yeah. And I will be looking forward to the 20 pound donation. For for doing a rubbish uh, good heart joke. You can make all the good heart jokes you want. But it'll cost you 20 quid for everyone. It's costing me money to have you as a guest on this show. Absolutely. Best idea ever. It's the worst thing ever. (laughs) Okay, I will leave it there. No. Um, (laughs) That's a good heart written by Maria McKee. Maria McKee. uh, From Show Me Heaven fame. Uh, Yep. uh, She was in a band called Lone Justice. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Maria was working with a guy that had already had an extraordinary career called Jimmy Iving. Mm. Jimmy then went on to set up uh, all kinds of record companies and produce everybody. Uh, Jimmy was this huge, iconic figure in the music industry. And if I remember this correctly, Lone Justice were a kind of a, a, a indie punk country band okay. from Austin, Texas. And Jimmy was producing their first album utterly convinced that A Good Heart was just a massive smash and couldn't quite get an arrangement for it. And Dave Stewart and I from Eurythmics were working together as Dave produced that album. Yeah. Jimmy sent it over to Dave and Dave and I set about trying to come up with an arrangement that we would then send back to Jimmy and Lone Justice for them to do a version of it. Uh, That was the arrangement we came up with. We sat listening to it. Now, Dave and I just went down an alleyway. That's where it took us. And that's what it sounded like. And we went, well, Lone Justice are never going to record this record. And by the way, the thing's going to be an enormous hit. Uh, Thankfully, about a week later, Lone Justice were playing the mean fiddler in Harleston. Yeah. 
Dave and I went to see Maria, blew me away, Lone Justice, just Maria's extraordinary talented songwriter and musician. And I think by that point, Maria was suitably fed up with the song that she went, yeah, you have it, you record wow. it, you put it out. Yeah, OK, well taken. Let's but, see what happens. <clears throat> I'm afraid to say anything in case I'm going to be fined again. Uh, um, but- as it... Turns out every time I see Maria, she thanks me for that. Does she? Uh, <laughs> um, uh, one of the reasons I really wanted to talk to you as well uh, is how how the environment has become such a big part of, yeah. of your life. And we got talking. We met, we met Shock in a pub, um, <laughs> in the pub, and uh, not too long ago. We got into a brief conversation about fly fishing because it's yeah. something I, I'm not good at, but I love the idea yeah. of it. It's tied up in nostalgia for me in many ways, as yeah, I yeah. said to you during the song there. Um where 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 does you your love of water come from? And I mean um, uh, rivers and lakes. And- uh, again, this will appeal to your instincts. I, uh, at 10, 11 years old, found myself in the clutches of the Christian brothers. Right. Uh, mm. As you know, the rules were school does not finish at half past three. And if you think for the next six years of your life, weekends are your own, you're deeply mistaken. Here's a long list of after-school club societies. You will volunteer for six or we will volunteer some for you. That leads me to believe I ticked a box called hurling at the time, which explains I was not born with this nose. It's been finely sculpted (laughs) on the end of three feet of ash called a hurl. Uh, I ticked another box called fly fish and a one called fly tying. Wow. So and fly tying, that, to, for people who don't know, are you, you tie the little flies that go onto yeah. the hook to catch the fish. Yeah. I mean, beautiful. And fly fish. So And so began a love story. And so began a love story. I retired from the music industry 12 years ago, 13 yeah. years ago. Became, decided to devote the rest of my life to uh, fly fishing. Uh, became chairman of the oldest fly fishing club in England. Which if is? Not, it's called the Amwell Magna Fishery. Yeah. Founded in 1841. Well, if you don't mind. Um, it's 60 ladies and gentlemen. And we look after two and a half miles of Chalk Stream in Hertfordshire. You, you mentioned during the song that that, that, that stretch of river yeah. is so well looked after by people who love the water and what lies beneath it so yeah. much that if we could all do a bit of that, we'd be dealing with a much cleaner oh, world. Oh, listen, without, without exception, it is still home to the probably the last remaining breeding population of all brown trout Great. in the River Lee, certainly south of Herdford. Yeah. Now, shortly after becoming chair, I realised that I was going to have to go and do something that was going to hark back to my childhood growing up in Derry and the Troubles and stuff. And that was going to pick a fight. Yeah. And in this case, <laughs> pick a fight with the Environment Agency. Yeah. As we were having a massive issue with the water and the quality of the water and the lack of water. Yeah. Now, that all got resolved quite quickly. Okay. But it did mean a trip to the High Court, or as I put it, me standing on the steps of the high court, leaning against the doorbell, banging furiously in the knocker, demanding yeah. entry at seven o'clock in the morning. So I be, be, got quite curious as to why 60 people who simply wanted to go fishing yeah. had fundamentally to take the environment agency to the high court. Yes. Simply to get them to do their own job. That made me curious. That gave me an itch. Stupidly, foolishly, naively, I scratched that itch. And here you are. And here we are. Here we are. And here, and, and do you know what? Keep on scratching because you're brilliant. You really are. You're a joy to talk to. I'm so happy you came in to see us at the top of the tower. Place is all mine. We will talk again. We may even fish at some point together. I really hope we do. You yeah. should come. come I'd up. love to. How come much is it going to cost me to go fishing with you? About 60 quid? Uh, it depends, depends on, on the You'll the have fines. to work on your puns. Oh, I'll have to work on <laughs> Fergal Shark, what a joy to see you. I'll see you very, very soon. Thanks for coming My in. My pleasure. Thank you. Virgin Radio